It's a nice day for a light sweater. Based on what Dane was wearing before he took his shirt off. He was wearing a sweatshirt. It's a nice day for a cardigan. You know, the thing about memes <laughs> is they don't exist in an audio medium, only in a visual medium, because you can't hear them. They haven't been produced. They just look like something that your brain can develop. So I just made them into an audio medium. You made the opposite of a GIF. Exactly. Can I wear a card again if I've never worn a card before? Ooh. That's a very good question. Oh, thanks. Marcus, can I? It's a mystery. How do, what do you mean? Mr. or or Mrs. Ree? I'm I'm not gonna entertain these <laughs> these <laughs> <laughs> We're not here to entertain. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Dane Holland, and have you read the headlines? I'm Austin Shazam Pfeiffer, and (laughs) I didn't have my microphone pointed at my mouth. (laughs) (laughs) I'm Marcus Whitaker, the ultra-terrestrial known as I Am Electric Man. I'm Austin Tiny Zent, and sometimes I de-string my dog. Huh? Huh? We're going to find out what that means on Nerded Through the Grapevine, a podcast where four best friends gather weekly to talk about our favorite parts of past, present, and future nerd culture. And today, we're starting off going straight to the Reddit threads where they ask the Grapevine questions in the nerdverse. Marcus? Kind of. Kind of. Well, they didn't ask us at all. Like, they just... (laughs) We're just answering it for Yeah, we're just going to answer it. They asked the hive mind that is Reddit, and most of the time, whenever these questions get asked, no one ever really sees them. They just wait for the best ones that pop up on the front page. Okay. Here's a question. Um, Is that how that works? Yep. Okay. Nerd Grapevine. Yes. Where do we get a majority of the information in which we talk about stuff? Wikipedia. (laughs) the internet <laughs> oh yeah it's and, there and reddit is any if anybody asks a question to reddit they're pretty much just trying to ask the internet yeah you, it's basically googling something without googling it so you can just ask the question go away for you know a day and then come back and it's like hey a bunch of people told you a bunch of different answers none of which are probably true <laughs> especially if it's a cyst and you ask like should i get this checked out and they oh. and they're like no it's just a pimple you'll be fine or other ones will be like no you need to go to the doctor immediately that's a da 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 like they have these hyper intuitive people that are on there that are like diagnosing cysts via visual what do you say (laughs) oh cyst I thought you said cyst see I thought he said a cyst and I was like well it might not be an assist if like there was too much time in between the pass and the shot that went in it wouldn't technically count as an assist at that point it'd be more like a brother let's go let's just (laughs) I'm Austin Shazam Pfeiffer, <laughs> yeah, and the truth go. is <laughs> up in you. <ya. laughs> that was what I was supposed to say, but I couldn't get it out because my microphone was pointed at my shoulder. <laughs> Reddit asked what? The Reddit user Fire Ferret asks the question, if video game characters were real life... Sur- oh! Smack that on. mouth, boy. Yeah, daddy. Celebrities. Let's start over, shall we? Okay. Before the slapping. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, I got. I cracked myself up. Oh, that was funny. If video game characters were real life celebrities, what would the headline be of their most recent controversy? What? <laughs> uh, like all video game characters were celebrities. Yes. Like what video game? character was recently in the headlines with a controversy well it's like my first instinct is like that mario and peach are having another one of their blowouts and she's left again and now he's gotta go find her i guess bowser (laughs) so this whole time it's just like oh my gosh are we really going through this again oh except it's on an episode of cops (laughs) and and, and then bowser's like 
you just always abandon her. I just have to pick her up where I find her. And, and Mario's, all, Mario's all like, oh, no, I just have a mission to go on. <laughs> and, and Peach is all like, <laughs> she talks. <laughs> she speaks. I, I, I'm sorry. I've never but played. I've never. It. I've never played yeah. any games where I hear her voice in my head. I right. can only remember what the Nintendo version of her sounded like originally. Just text. <laughs> Just the. <laughs> 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 it's me, Mario. I'm here for a pitch again, again. Yes, again. My favorite was when he, you would just like leave him standing there on like Mario 64, and he would just like fall asleep, and he would be like <laughs> spaghetti, <laughs> lasagna. Like, he would, just, would he really say I that? I swear, he would fall asleep, yeah. and he would just dream about spaghetti. Is that not like? I mean, that's a stereotype, right? Oh, for Italians. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Dude, he's an Italian plumber. Well, he is Italian, though. Is a plumber an Italian stereotype? Was I that, don't know. Was that one before Mario? Because now it is. I think that Mario maybe. turned it know. into one. Maybe. I think maybe. he did, too. Yeah, because it wasn't Well, he like definitely Mario... speaks in a very stereotypical way, for sure. Yeah, it, oh, wasn't, yeah. it wasn't Mario the Italian mafia guy. You know, it was the... That's the stereotype. I'd play that game. Well, they've got that. It's called Dr. Mario. And what you do- <laughs> I think this would be the headline, though. This would be yeah. the headline. What's that? Is Mario a stereotype? Okay. Yeah. That, see, that'd be more like a blog headline. Yeah. Like uh, a, like I, th- a I thought it was headline. like, is Mario into organized crime? Is Mario good for, like, me spiritually? Or, like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, but the question was, what if he was a real person? Right. So how can he be a stereotype if he's a real person? I don't know. Have you existed on Earth the past 40 years? Or they no, could, or they could but have, I have for 33. <laughs> they could have an announcement uh, in like the Inquirer talking about the royal family of the Mushroom Kingdom having Princess Peach and Mario and their newborn child, but that child has got a green hat on. Luigi oh. is their son? No. Oh. Oh. Luigi. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. <laughs> what about other than Mario, though? Because well, that no, was low-hanging fruit. That was okay. low-hanging fruit. Well, that had so I many mean, good options, though. It did. Maybe Sonic causing a rash of rug burn in all of his partners. <laughs> Who? <laughs> Sonic, the Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog. It's a new STD. He's really fast. <laughs> a, a Sonic transmitted disease. Exactly. <laughs> it's an STD. <laughs> 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 oh, What's the villain's name? Everyone will be a quickie. World? Dr. Robotnik. Oh. The, never mind. Wait. Yeah. yeah. The, the yeah. Eggman. The Eggman. They, call, they call him the Eggman. Gosh. I am the Eggman. Cuckoo. 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 <laughs> I like, I like the, uh, the sonic transmitted disease. Yeah. Yeah. Sam, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think. Oh, that cool. wouldn't even have to be like uh, his partners, per se. It could be anyone that he's like ran up against, right? Possibly, yeah, because he could he could scrub by on a run. You wouldn't even know he was there. True, true. It's, it's the the true ghost disease. It's just a blue blur that runs by you, and all of a sudden you got a red rash, blue burr, blue burr, red ash. Smack it again. Okie dokie. Yeah, daddy. <laughs> the slapping. I think that I think that what I'm picturing here is a string of serial masturbations by Superman, but they don't know that at the beginning because it's actually just mysterious gunshot victims. Can I get that clicker now? <laughs> and what happens is they just, they're just they mysterious gunshot victims and they don't see what happens. They just get shot out of nowhere and they can never find the bullet. Oh. Like they don't, know what, they don't know what's happening until one night he gets caught by none other than Batman who was doing the same thing from above. He just so happened to catch Superman in the act. <laughs> well, we're not going to be able to top that. Well. <laughs> I mean, we can't so, top that. Hold on. I, I, I do have a question of logistics. Are you saying that his... Yes, I am. His, Every bit of that. His canine finish... Yes. <laughs> is... Velocity of a is bullet. exiting his body fast enough to wound and or kill a person. That's exactly why I never believed that him and Lois Lane could have a child. Well, in Smallville, the only... The he first would, time that they laid together, she actually got powers as well. So they were like... Yeah. They weren't worried about that part of well, the there's relationship. A, there's your pickup line. So he literally... <laughs> hey, baby. <laughs> oh. What? 
tiny. Dag yeah. nabbit. <laughs> I want to beat. I want to beat that just to make people wonder what just happened. Yes. <laughs> oh, be glad y'all missed it. No, I, our I, listeners here. Uh, anyway, it, it it rhymed with. <laughs> 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 but no, that's the best. That's the best that I could come up with because I spent that entire circular motion that happened with this group of us talking, thinking about that, and that's the best that I can come up with. Because I've always wondered about that with Superman. You know, main thing. You know, the just, main thing you've ever wondered about <laughs> Superman is how he doesn't kill people when he's masturbating. <laughs> no, just whenever he canine finishes. I would have pictured. I that bet he's issue got the perfect being more of like the Flash. <laughs> and, oh man! But that's me, <laughs> Marcus. If you don't finish that thought, <laughs> give it I'm to me. Do very it. Give it. it. That, no, we 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 imply things here. No, give it to <laughs> me. Do we? I said. I bet he's got the perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, duh. <laughs> or he is an alien. Uh, Do not forget that. Oh, that's true. It could be like a three headed. <laughs> or what if it also know. wears glasses? <laughs> what if it looks like a hot dog that's been microwaved for too long? Oh, my God. It's just really crinkled. Just, <laughs> it's just kind of blown out on the end. <laughs> <laughs> little spikiness around his mouth. <laughs> God. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> oh, there's the tea kettle. He's, he's like Welcome got, back. He's got one more superpower we never knew. We knew about the frost breath and laser eyes, but we didn't know about the one below the belt. <laughs> Why do you think he wears his underwear on the outside so it's stopped by <laughs> so he'd stop having to buy them? He's got to contain that, that thing. Is that underwear made out of Kevlar? <laughs> I don't know, but it, if, if not, it'll probably eat through it. Yeah. Uh, there's sure. no waistband in that one. You know, I'm sure that's what I'm sure that's exactly what John Williams was thinking about whenever he wrote oh the Superman God. theme song. You know, he just oh, that's Star Wars. Never mind. Same guy though. Yeah, same almost movie. the same theme. Similar song. Very, yeah, very close. similar. Very close. Are we still on topic? Do what? Are we still on topic? Was there ever a topic? topic? Now, yeah. see, I, I was thinking more along the lines of like. Donkey Kong rips Monster Bong or something like that to where like Donkey, Donkey Kong has been caught smoking the devil's cabbage and mm. shame out of a banana shaped bong exactly and you know Diddy is the one that's like his little I would say drug mule <laughs> I wonder what all those barrels actual, were full of yes Ooh, or moonshine has Donkey Kong been running an illegal moonshine operation as well well, he's lost a lot of money because them barrels get blown up constantly, constantly. Yeah. And you think, you think he would protect his barrels, and then he gets his family he's in on it. Willy nilly, he gets the kid, he gets the kids in on. He does. The they operation. don't know what they're doing. Diddy has no idea what's going on. Well, it's yeah. just like that well, so Wallace movie with uh, Shia LaBeouf and uh, Tom Hardy. You know, is that his name? Yeah, that's <gasps> the man. That's who Peach left Donkey Kong for. Tom that's Hardy. Why no, no, no. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> no, no, no. Are Pe we crossing here? Peach left Mario for, for Donkey Kong. <laughs> because she was the first. That was her first. Wait. Oh, it was. Donkey Kong was holding Peach hostage before Bowser was ever in the picture. You're exactly right. Sorry, I didn't mean to ex interrupt your topic. But there's our headline. Does she just have well, a thing for bad boys? Maybe Bowser's her father. Wait a second. <laughs> She's blood of the dragon. Yeah. Is he a dragon? Uh, he's not a, not a dragon. He's got a he's got a like shell like a turtle. Hmm. He's like a but a uh, mouth like a dragon man. He spits fire. He spits yes, fire. true. Like there's a there's a Godzilla a shelled monster. a shelled dragon, an armored dragon. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. dragon scales alone. He armor, also right? he also had a, a hot air balloon that he piloted pretty skillfully, and you had to beat him in too. Mm -hmm. If you remember Super Mario World from the uh, Super Nintendo, I don't. I never had a Super Nintendo. Well, I was a, a Sega Genesis instead. I love that Genesis though; it was wonderful. Yeah, whatever. It would have been poetic if that was my first system I ever had. Genesis. Well, then that's when you just changed a little detail here and there. Yeah, but yeah. I can't lie to myself like that. the The SNES, actually, no, the Atari was the first one I ever had. I never had an Atari. No, I only played one game. It was a game where you rode on the back of ostriches, and you, I think it was called Joust. It was Joust, <laughs> it was joust on the backs of ostriches, Tiny? Do you remember I that game? I have no idea. That sounds like no. an inserted memory. I don't know. Uh, I, I do. I, I, I think had we, a Commodore 64. 
That's good too. Yeah. That's nice and old. I played a horrible game. The only game I remember was called The Hulk. And you started off as Bruce Banner in a chair in this room. And there was in. no instruction on what to do. So after a couple hours of pushing random buttons, you realize that the arrow keys, if you hit them back and forth, he rocks in the chair. So you're like, okay, I figured something out. So you make him rock for what seems like an eternity. <laughs> and then he tips over and then he gets mad and he busts out of the chair. <laughs> He's mad because you took so long. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then he rips the door out of the wall and enters a hallway of other doors. And that's when I gave up. <laughs> <laughs> The baguette, the tutorial. Yeah. That, that, yeah. that literally sounds like my Superman uh, experience on the N64. I think we were able... Uh, we, yeah, we had good enough, long enough answers for just one of those to cover. I had another one that I was going to do, but I think we're just going to stick to that. You sure? Yeah. Well, no, nah, this one will be pretty quick because I know where some of you are going to go with it. Uh, <laughs> All Trash 1 says, if you had an, an infant... an in- What? Yeah, Daddy. Smack it. If you had an infinitely hard material you could shape into any form you like, what would you do with it? Ask Superman. I would I would create a um, gravity manipulation engine to house it, so therefore anything inside of it would be uh, protected. Uh, from the outside elements uh, by both the manipulative metal and the manipulation of the force surrounding the manipulative metal. So it would contour to all of the people inside of it. The hell are you talking about? (laughs) Sorry, the thought just seems very alien. (laughs) You know, uh, just the the thought of a metal that could be so indestructible yet so fragile feeling at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> I spilled coffee on my pee pee. Oh, not you, not the gray so, sweatpants. The, oh, man. It doesn't matter what kind of stuff you spill on your gray sweatpants. It always looks like you had an accident. <laughs> I spilled coffee on my pee pee. So, uh, aliens. You were going somewhere into aliens <laughs> That's, there. No, I don't know. No, I was getting into it because, you know, this in 1947 in Roswell, uh, New Mexico. I thought you were going to say North Carolina. <laughs> just to try to get the just to try to get the well-known city wrong. Yeah. In Roswell, Florida. We had the, the great swamp incident of 1947 <laughs> where they had a flying disc just fly into the farmlands. <laughs> Thus forming the state of Florida. And <laughs> as we had down there, the stilitization of all of your things. <laughs> uh, no, in 1947 in uh, Roswell, New Mexico, there was a farmer that reported seeing a alien craft, which he didn't say alien craft. He said a flying saucer. That's what he saw fly into his mountainside farm area. And it was kind of... An immediate reaction from the police, and then an immediate unreaction from the police. Mm -hmm. And I kind of teamed up with somebody in the Grapevine universe this week to research a little bit of this kind of stuff. And this is kind of where it all started as far as the stories that I was aware of. But we share a common goal in this, and that is just talking about stuff on a podcast. Marcus, I am Electric Man. It's going to uh, talk a little bit about this with me as well. Yes, combining topics. I mean, because what's more interesting topic? Especially now that all the mainstream news and independent news on the internet is all talk. They're all talking about this now. Exactly. Now that we've had Pentagon confirming that some of these videos are real videos, they're not confirming like what the videos are of, other than that they don't know. And so I don't know. It's a broad topic, but you know we we kind of talked about maybe framing it in the sense of what they're talking about nowadays, like the new craze about it, because it's back in the public consciousness and it's a little less like taboo to talk about it openly now. And it's so odd to have something that you know circa twenty years ago. <clears throat> in case you you all don't know this, that's still in the year two thousand. 
Ouch. Yeah. Yeah. How's that make you feel? So you've got even circa the year 2000, it's going to be a weird topic to bring up to people because they're going to be, they would probably look at you a little bit like, what does that matter? Like, why would you even, that's no, no, I don't. I don't believe in aliens. Today, I was bringing it up to a few people that were coming through the shop, and I did it to a few different age groups just because I love just doing random surveys, pub- random public <laughs> surveys for my own amusement later to <laughs> then publish and put on Spotify and other networks to <laughs> listen to by other people that have no idea who they are. So one person I talked to, was uh, he was in the military, and he worked on an aircraft carrier. And I was talking to him about if he ever experienced anything uh, out there while he was on the wide open sea. And he said, no, that, that was all I got from that. But <laughs> no, no, he said, uh, he said, no, the, they, we would occasionally take trips to uh, San Francisco down from Washington and uh, they would just fi- do what would they called war games. He said, but there would be certain places out towards the bay that you would have lights that would surround underneath your the entirety of the carrier. And it underneath like, it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And look like it's circling. In the water? Yeah. Hold and, on. So not only are there unidentified flying objects, there's unidentified swim. submerged objects? Yes. Well, well, and let's just focus on this new information right now, just for yeah, this. Yeah, I want to know more about these submerged objects. Well, on, you can just Google it, you know, YouTube, or just turn on the mainstream news. I don't news. use Google, I use I'm Bing. I'm talking about <laughs> other people, not you, Tiny. Oh. E- everyone else. Yeah. Okay. But I'm just, I'm, I'm saying like, they, they're interviewing this guy who was, who led this secret Pentagon program for like 20 something years. His name's like Lou Elizondo. And he's been going on all the major networks and telling about all this stuff that they have not only trained pilots viewing them. But they have them on radar and like tracking speed, like they can track their speed and stuff now. So like this is the kind of thing that hopefully we'll learn when the government is supposed to tell us here next month what they know about this phenomenon. But what was I trying to get to? Because submerged objects. Yes. So they are the same. They're one and the same. Yes. The UFOs, they have been witnessed going from the sky, 13,000 miles an hour plus with making no sound, no sign of propulsion, immediately into the ocean with no like splashes even sometimes. And that's why I was making that long stupid reference earlier talking about a <laughs> talking about a metal that was very soft looking like tin foil but also very durable, talking about a gravity manipulation engine all this stuff because th- that's the what they found at the crash site in 1947 was actually put out publicly in the newspapers and in press releases from the US government with the main individual who investigated it with a picture of him and a picture of what appeared to be just stuff from a weather balloon. I think it was sticks and foil and glue and all this stuff. Okay, cool. And that was believed, you know, for until probably the, like the 1990s until these people were on their deathbed and they finally spilled the beans. Oops. And then the government was like, at that point, the government was like, Oh, well, yeah, well, that's partly true, but actually they were just covering up for a bigger weather balloon that wasn't a normal weather balloon. It was like a super weather balloon, and people in all sorts of positions that were back, that were even alive back in those days were just were all getting to that end-of-life stage back in the 1990s, and they were just spilling it all. Well, part of that is, I don't remember the name of the act, but there was a bill passed years ago that... Things that are classified and top secret, as long as they're no longer a matter of national security, they get released to the public. Is it the Information Act? Uh, so uh, I think it might be the Freedom of Information Act. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. I don't know the exact one. But that's how we knew the identity of Deep Throat during Watergate. That's how we got yeah. that information. So it could be that not just they're dying. Also, I do have a question. I don't I'm not trying to hurry y'all, but have we figured out why they're fascinated with their buttholes? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh that's basically the, okay, just throwing this out here. If you've ever spent time with me enough to watch what I'm watching on television, you will see zoo shows. And in these zoo shows, you will see these animals getting all sorts of different medical procedures done to them. And if you ever notice between somebody who's getting 
abducted by aliens, a commonality with a majority of their stories on anything that's going on. Bro. You look at people at a zoo treating animals for sickness. The way that these animals are just going about their lives, just doing their normal day to day, you know, I'm bouncing back and forth on this cage. All of a sudden, I'm out and I, I, I open my eyes and I'm in this white room surrounded by people with large eyes. And they were, they were putting things in my butt. <laughs> and that's exactly what I saw when they were trying to artificially inseminate cats on in this zoo show. But that's the thing, like, that's it's it's a weird thought to think that we could be somebody's like zoo animal project, mm-hmm. but you know, uh, but the the submersive objects too. The reason that they would be able to go into the water without making a splash if they had that gravity meter is because it would manipulate the gravity surrounding that area that that metal is in, and then they can go to and fro and uh, move in well, between. It could molecules. also have something to do with shape and aerodynamics, you know, because aerodynamics and hydrodynamics. Well, if you're manipulating time you can and space, hold on. <laughs> yeah. Okay, aerodynamics and hydrodynamics are very similar in how they react with different shapes. So that if it's shaped just right, kind of like skipping a rock, it, it, it's you know you see what I'm saying. Yeah, but if that shape's able to change in form, especially if that motor is designed to make it do so, I mean that but would we don't even, there's not even evidence. Of nobody a knows. Motor. This is the thing. That, like, these pilots, the people who have seen them with their eyes, they find no sign of motor or propulsion or exhaust. And so it's just defying every notion that we have of physics, in a sense. And that's from the pilots themselves. Who are who, uh, 60 Minutes just did a big thing recently, well, like, like this past week, on this. And it's got all the news talking about it now. So, I mean, like the, the amount of news about it right now is just kind of ramping up, and hopefully, you know, here next month they'll tell us more. Yeah, because they passed that in the past stimulus that yes. Donald Trump signed on December twenty seventh, that actually got enacted when Biden was in office. Uh, they passed the furthering of that right of information. They passed a furthering of it that is going to require the release of any and all information revolving around UFOs. And otherworldly vehicles and such, and there's other wording to it. But so, is there anything to correlate the vehicle shape with the type of alien? Because there, there's three main aliens that most people come in contact with. There's the Greys, which have you know the big kind of roundish heads with the big almond shaped eyes that we all think of when we think of an alien. Then there's the the reptilians, which is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. And then there's the Nords which look like humans, um, except blonde hair, blue eyes. It's theorized that they are, in fact, humans, but from further along in the timeline that have come back to visit. So they're aliens, but they're still humans. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, so like time hops. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't really get a chance because I'm more of a skeptic. I didn't really get a chance to preface this. So, I don't know. I, I want to be able to talk about all these things, but yet not come off as if I necessarily believe them. Because mm-hmm. I'm a skeptic, not... I mean, basically, I have to force myself to be a skeptic because I'm so gullible. <laughs> yeah. And I've been burnt too many times, right? Yeah. Cause I, so, I'm very, like, right brain person. Like, I'm, I like to live in the unknown. But like I said, I've been burnt a few times. So, I am rather skeptical a lot on all of this. So what I just want to say is that we know now, recently, that th- we have things in the skies that we cannot explain. We have pilots who say blah, 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 blah. But yes, so I just wanted to say that so that we can talk about all the lore. Because yeah. like, I, I think we're conflating two different things. There are things that people see in the sky. And then there are abduction stories where people experience some far stranger things than just pointing up in the sky and saying, what is that? That looks like it's doing some crazy stuff. Yep. Even that stuff is def- like it is a spectacle to see, I'm sure. But they're different, little different phenomena. You know what? I've not asked this to the entire group yet. Uh, this is going out to the entirety of the Grapevine group here. Has anybody here seen a what they would consider a UFO? You and I have. Yes, Dane and Shazam. I have never seen anything that I could not explain. Okay. 
Tiny. I have seen some unidentified flying objects, which I identified later. Um, I'm kind of in the same boat with Marcus in some ways. Um, I'm not left-brained. I'm ambibraneous. Um, but I am very skeptical. I don't think necessarily that aliens do exist. I do think it is a possibility, right. just not highly probable. Right. Well, and see, I, I, like I said, I make myself have to be skeptical because I want to believe it so bad. And so I recognize that. And so I'm just like, okay, you know, check these boxes for, I mean, but with all of it being in the news again now has just reverted me back to that conspiratorial, like, mode mm-hmm. but to I, your i to can't your be question, a conspiracy though, i can't hold do on it. i want to do this yeah it's there's it, i'm ambibranious but to your okay because oh. i went down the <laughs> rabbit hole in you know researching for this topic so there i, I kind of ran into this kind of group on the internet who is they're they're convinced that this is a we don't know what they are because we are so cl- we're clung to this materialist worldview so much that we think that they have to be from another planet. They can't just be here and now and in like some sort of side pocket reality or, you know, but so basically to boil it all down into a shell or whatever, I don't know what kind of uh, things I'm trying to say right now. Sure. Anyway, they, they are convinced that it's matter is created or the materialist worldview, worldview, oh my God. Smack get it, it hard. Oh get, it, get it out of the I'm way. I'm trying to get all these yeah, ideas yeah. out in a in I one a word that like says talk to the hands or <laughs> or maybe or maybe just like, you know, I'm stupid. It has an arrow pointing up at you, you know, just ideas burning <laughs> in my skull. <laughs> Thanks, For Orange brevity. County. For brevity. The materialist worldview says that our consciousness, the things that we, you know, our brain experiences emotions, thoughts, you know, that that all comes from the matter of our brain. Well, these people are like, nope. Consciousness creates matter, creates reality. Thought creates reality. So that they're they're convinced that that's why we can't see them because these are literally ultra terrestrials. They're not extra terrestrials. These are these are beings that are not physical. They may be able to take physical forms like a Nord or a Gray or a reptilian. And sometimes the Grays and Greens kind of get mixed yeah. up. They look the same, yeah. but they have different color skin. Right. So, yeah, uh, that's one just kind of theory. But that gets into a whole other thing where the people, because like I said, people can experience some weird things. So not only are there abduction stories, but there are some people that think that they channel these UFOs and will show up in their yard. They'll tell you straight to your face. They seem like normal people. I can channel a UFO and show them in my yard. And my wife freaked out, and she thought I was a witch. I knew aliens existed in 1999 when I heard Enema of the State by Blink-182, <laughs> and I heard this beautiful voice tell me that, Mom, there's something in the back room. I think it might be creatures from above. Hold on. I need to revisit something. Oh, shit. It's a Tom DeLong <laughs> reference, yes. right? Okay. Yes. And he is a part of a group that is funded by the U.S. government to research otherworldly vehicles. I didn't realize you and Kelsey were married. We're not. No. You said your wife. No, I didn't. No, you no, did. he was talking about other. It was a, it was another person, like people that can channel UFOs. They would be like, oh, oh, you was quoting some, yeah, 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 okay, yeah. No, I'm saying okay, there, there sorry. are people who think that they, yeah, I'm tracking now. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm <laughs> You're like, I thought completely I knew misunderstood. You. Uh, back to a while ago when Austin started talking about it, he and I saw an unidentified flying object. Uh, to the point of, because at first we just saw this light You're in the like, sky like, what is that? while we were driving down I-40. At first we didn't even say anything about it because we no. were both like, star. I get, we guarantee he thought star. Star. Just star. really bright star. But as we go down the road, it, we're probably 10 minutes after I had seen that in the sky. And it's in the same spot in the sky. Like it hasn't moved from where we're moving and like I'm able to look up at my windshield and see it in the same part of my windshield. And we're traveling from west to east, right? Can uh, I stop y- you yes. for just for a couple of questions? Please. Was this a busy road? No. So it was like it a was at road. night. No, no, it was, was I forty. It was on I forty, probably. About was there at night. was there any cars around you? Not many. No, it wasn't very busy. Should there have been? 
Yeah. We were on I-40 coming from Nashville back to Cookville. I, I'm sorry. That's the kind of rabbit hole huh. I went down today. These people who are like all about the thought creates reality, yeah. like they think these are ultra terrestrials, they point out with all these abduction and UFOs following you in your car theories. They ask them, was there anybody else on the road? Because uh, cause in most cases... There was, you're not. You're they're alone. alone. I mean, there were so other they, cars. So you see what yeah. they're trying to say. But the, I see where they're getting but that. But think about yeah. it now, though. I mean, I, I know you can't really remember a lot of cars passing us and going by, but, you know, that's just one of those instances to where we had enough available focus to take focus off the road and pay attention to something yeah. going on off the road. And the way that we drive, like, it's not a, let me look at something over here. Because yeah. if that happens, we go off the road. Did it right. follow you? You I feel w- like it followed I you? Think it, it hung in the same spot, and then we pulled over because we actually, there was you a... You had uh, that big, expensive camera that, well, I'm using heavy quotations on that. Well, yeah. You had that that first nice camera, camera that you had ever bought, right. and you were wanting to take a picture of you. We got to get take a picture of this. If it's going to be right here, we got to see what this is. Because we're both kind of freaking out about it, Because uh, and my heart was like going crazy, because at first, you know, if you're going through your head like, what all this could be, it could be a helicopter, so we got the window rolled down. We, we do find a rest stop that we pull over on the side of the road, and there's no sound whatsoever. Like, there's no sound of any kind of helicopter. There's no jet engine sound or anything. And before I can grab my camera, it just, like, a sh- bullet. Like, a bullet. Just, sh- like, a shooting star. How far away was it? Like, it would be hard to determine, but it was enough for us to see a determined top and bottom, almost like a snowflake that was up, like... Almost like a snowflake design, but if a snowflake was like three dimensional, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 it cool. was, yeah, it was, it was, man, it was, it was weird. We were both like losing it because we mm-hmm. didn't know, like, because I'd never, you know, seen so, anything like so that. So, would before. you describe it as a saucer? Because mm-hmm. apparently, there are not only the different, there's, a, there's lore no. to this. Like, this has been in the consciousness since what you talked about, the Roswell incident. Yeah. So, I'm not trying to interrupt your no, story. No, no, it's no, very interesting. Go. Yeah. But it just reminds me, you know, because the Roswell incident is what put, like the quote unquote, it was from the the, the newspaper you were talking yes. about earlier, flying saucers. That was the first time that that was in the, like the lexicon of of our yes. country, and that was that was what imprinted it because they had actually had stories before of flying vehicles and other things, but the inception of the idea of a flying saucer was actually put into the, you know, with that farmer saying, you know, it looked, it looked like, like a flying fl- saucer. Yeah, it looked like a flying saucer flew into my field. This no. one was more instead of like what would be considered saucer flying, you know, with a bottom and top, bottom facing the planet and the top facing the sky. This one was more upright, like if a saucer were upright. Yeah. Because like if you would have... part if, was pointing towards... Yeah. Because if you would have turned it on its side... Well, they do rotate. They, I yeah. They kind of rotate sometimes. So. Man, that just trips me out thinking well, about it, though, because so it's almost like that's a blurry spot, even though it's a like a huge memory. Well, and that's, yeah. that's a lot of people describe that same thing. Yeah, and that's I mean I don't know the guy's name is like oh gosh I'm gonna I might have to look it up here in a minute uh yeah I'll have to look it up anyway <clears throat> so there's the flying saucers there's the black pyramids or the triangles and then there are uh like uh, I think they're described as a sphere within a cube types type vehicles or things I don't know there's hmm. just like there's you know different races you remember that the, military guy that I mentioned earlier that I talked to at the shop today yeah. After he told me that, he said, yeah, but when I was nine years old, I uh, was driving on the road with my mom, and we were coming back home, and we were taking back roads, and he told me where he lived, and I know where it is, but I'm not going to tell you, but it just, you got to take a lot of back roads to get there. And he said that his uh, he saw in the sky what looked like three glowing circles that were almost looked like they were attached, almost like a triangle that could move within itself. Because he said, I, I remember this. He said, I remember it so well. And I remember telling my mom, like, you, just look, 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 look. And she got so freaked out and scared by what she saw that she put her hand on my chest. She's like, he's like, she did the mom thing and no. put her hand just right <laughs> on my chest. Like, <gasps> you know, and she pulled over on the side of the road. And by the time that they pulled over on the side of the road and looked up at it, it Yeah. And see, okay, like I said. I'm not appealing to these people because I believe what they're saying. It's just right. interesting. But they would say, like, that's those are the types of portals that they use to literally just blink in and out of our reality. Yeah. That these are not beings from vast distances of space. I mean, mm-hmm. it's basically a spirit world kind of thing that they're talking about. Yeah. But I don't know. 
it's it's really interesting you, uh, to did, hear people because people can experience some weird stuff. Did y'all delve into the Eisenhower disappearances? Um, no. Okay, um, I heard an interview with I believe it's his daughter uh, Laura about different times during Eisenhower's presidency, who was you know president around the time of the Roswell incident. He disappeared. Um, the Secret Service didn't know where he was. They lost the president for almost an entire day. Lost him. Um, there was, because for most people that don't know, for the president to not take his Secret Service detail with him, there's a laundry list of paperwork that you have to fill out in order to go somewhere by yourself. So there should have been a paper trail of him leaving. But it was it was like in the middle of the night, he's gone until pretty much the next night. And this happened multiple times. There was one time he supposedly went to the dentist, but there's no dental records of him visiting the dentist on that day. And it didn't reflect the work that he supposedly had done. His, his records didn't reflect that work. Hmm. So I'll have to look that up. Yeah, it, it's it's very fascinating. Well, the guy that I was trying to think of his name of, his name is Grant Cameron. I think there is like a, a politician with that same name. So try to find the UFO guy. <laughs> uh, it was aliens. But, so he even he was like known for like writing a book about the presidents and experiences with UFOs and like so he probably wrote about that. Uh, but then he said, even within the UFO, like, you know, what culture, he started getting like, oh, come on, man. When he started going down the route of like channeling them and like everything is thought and consciousness. So even when he, you know, this is a even fringe when it comes to UFOlogy, mm-hmm. uh, th- this Grant Cameron guy, but he did start out more kind of straightforward, more straight lace and writing about like the presidents and how. You know, because I think Carter uh, like may have actually ordered a shoot down of some that flew over the White House. I mean, that, that sounds about right because I think I remember hearing about that at some point yeah. in my random interneting. Like, right, and people have been experiencing abduction stories for a long time, way before we would even think that the Earth was not the center of the universe. You know, so I don't know. I think it's extremely interesting the abduction stories. But it's just like it, there's just there's you've got all your work cut out for you to link them with the UFOs, in my opinion. Well, it, it's all theory, which is like that makes it so fun to kind of right. look at because well, yeah, but, well, and and some of this stuff is just you can't even really make a real like scientific no, theory no. about because there is it goes no beyond, way to measure yeah. these things. It goes beyond like what we can even measure, like you said, right? Yeah, like a fish doesn't know it's in water. Right, and you know that the even though that the alien spikes are like the the unidentified flying objects and the the talk about you know th- there's been secret government documentation of like fifty three different species of aliens and this and that, it, all of this stuff has not just recently became popular again, and it's very weird when the stuff started slipping out from under the like, and I don't want to use a radar joke when I'm about to talk about something <laughs> that was a test pilot. But I'm going to go into it here. Something flew under the radar <laughs> in 2020 Whoa. because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Like the pandemic was such a sweeping news story that it encompassed the world. And anything else was second class news compared to what was going on with that. And I'm not saying that was two or connected in any way. It just so happens that when they start releasing this information, it gets kind of swept under the rug again. It goes under the radar because they've got these test pilots and like state representatives and Congress people that are like, oh, yeah, that's what it is. Like these these guys are like, well, it's it's probably it's it's coming up matching you know about Mach two, and this this little blob it almost looks like a, a something that doesn't maintain shape, but it's flying up with them, and the thing just blips, gone. So super also, superman semen. You've already said what it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what happens when it hits atmosphere. Yeah, exactly. It and becomes some the, sentient. Some of the pilots even report that it seems like these vehicles know what they are going to do before they do it, and like they're able to meet them like in places that they shouldn't be able to. I don't know. So that's just what what, what you said made me think of that. Yeah. There's a lot to it. Let's, Let's just. I don't want to put it into nerd grapevine canon. Just because I don't want to say I told you so, but I believe sometime within the year 2021, we will be finding out major 
major news on the forefront of alien activity. And when that happens, we can revisit this whole topic. Because it's like, because me, I'm just sitting here listening and soaking it in because yeah. I, I don't like, I, I don't dive into all that stuff. Like, because well, you I, should. I mean, I'm uh, one, at least watch like what the mainstream neat. news yeah. is talking about. Right. I mean, because even the fact that that's even in right. a 60 minutes article, mm-hmm. yeah, like. Okay, now they're really trying to tell you something. Right. I, that's what I'm saying. Even President Obama went on the late night show and like said, talked about it. And even he, you could tell, couldn't really talk about it. Like he didn't like want to just spill the beans well, yet. He's like, it's not well, time. I think, I think what they're going to do. So let me add this to my prediction, to okay. your prediction. I think what they're going to do is they're going to give us just hard information and then let us decide because it's one of those things that kind of defies people's beliefs, mm-hmm. people's deeply held beliefs. It's one of those things that they're going to like give us the information and be like, do what you will with that one, y'all. Right. Because everybody's yeah. going to make up their own theory on yeah. this. Yeah, because that's going to cause an automatic split in the way that people are perceiving a lot of their own realities. Absolutely. And it's going to be a very scary situation once Absolutely. somebody is committed to the idea of this is real. And I'm not saying it is. Or it isn't real. Right. Yeah. Or I'm not even saying it is. They could come out and be like, oh, yeah, all this stuff, like these guys were trying to write for Hollywood and they weren't actually. Well, I mean, I'm not even saying it's a lie. And I know we're trying to wrap this up, but I'm just, I think it's more accurately is that what we really know as of right now, we've speculated all all this whole topic, but what we really know is, yeah, there's some things in the air we can't explain. Right. That's all we know. That's That's all we know. And I think that's all they're going to say. Right, and the but it may just give us more details about these things that fly in the air that we don't know. I yep. would, I would love it. So, back to the question of the long, malleable, infinitely hard metal for Panda Face Trash Mouth, whatever his username oh, was. That was all, all trash. I think is what it was. something. Or f- I would make a long metal rod to bash fruits and vegetables to watch them explode because I'm I'm a big Gallagher fan. Ooh, uh, <laughs> okay, uh, and I like that. we all know what time it is. It's time for another rendition of Tiny's Terrible Tabs. Oh, Tiny's, Tiny's Terrible, terrible Tabs. Tabs. Yeah. Yeah. So the first tab on the menu <laughs> is how to grow a moss lawn. Now, that's good. Yeah. Moss is great for lawn. But also, did you know that clover is well, a really good lawn This source? is how to turn the entirety of your lawn into moss. Oh, the whole thing. The whole thing. Because it's it's actually very good for the environment. Mm-hmm. The moss produces more oxygen than common grass. Mm-hmm. And you also don't have to ever mow it. It's just there, and it lives, and it's actually very pretty. So... Because with uh, similar to that, the uh, clover, like it was deemed a weed or whatever, to where that way, like companies that produce sprays for this kind of thing could make more money of people being like, oh no, I've got a bunch of like clover growing. I need to have that spray to have regular grass put there. But it's actually like a fantastic source for like for a yard. Yeah. Like for that. The next tab is the top 10 uses for human hair. Um, uh, I don't. Well, sounds spicy. Be beyond being on your head. Yes. Um, <laughs> go the, on. The number one use is wig making for you know. Oh well, yeah. Well, cancer uh, patients, no, that's, alopecia, that's, that's yada yada boring. yada. Boring. Go um, there's <laughs> there's test dresses for you know hairdressers to practice dyeing hair that sort of thing. Um, it's also used. Um, it was in, a technique invented in China and India. Hair is woven into a mat-like product that is laid down to give nutrients to growing fruits and vegetables. Now we're getting like a fertilizer. Keep going. Um, NASA several years ago theorized that you could use human hair to clean up oil spills, and there was never really any follow-up. Okay. It didn't make it out of the prototype <laughs> stage. Okay. Oh. Um, it has been used to make clothing. There's a a clothing designer that made a dress and a barber made a bikini. I want a hair shirt of your hair, Tiny. (laughs) Oh, gosh. Tiny's hair shirt. It would be soft. It would be soft. It would be soft. Not the kind of hair that I want. So would you shower with the shirt on? 
I mean, uh, sure. Hold on, how else would hold you on wash a second. It? Let me call my dad. I would never take it off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how else would you wash it thoroughly? You know, obviously you with shampoo it. and conditioner. Yeah. And the more you condition it, the softer it would be. I mean, you wouldn't ever have to change clothes. True. Um, it can be used to create works of art. It's been done to make a big banner. Um, Artists would put some like a piece of their hair in their paintings, like as yeah. like or DNA for different that painting. colors of hair to make actual full pieces of art. Mm. Uh, somehow making soy sauce, which I just now seen. <laughs> Wait, what? It says as if you needed another reason to avoid things made in China. Here's a company that used human hair to make soy sauce. Since human hair is rich in protein, they were. They were able to treat it, remove the amino acids, and pass it off as soybean oil. That's Holy... dis- that's disgusting. Now I was intrigued, and now I'm upset. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, the other two were kind of boring. Nesting kinda material snacky. for birds. <laughs> yeah, I'm hungry too. I, any t- I don't know. I don't know. But just like <laughs> just like the thought of Chinese food for some reason. I don't know. It's it so just, good. I well, mm, I know that I have an entire pan okay. of leftover Jesus chicken in my back seat. But also used to craft <laughs> rope. You know, some Native Americans did that. Uh huh. So some of them were mundane. Some of them were cool. Hey, remember that word? Mundane. Yeah. Some of them were not as good. Some Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, a couple of these websites I, I found through Facebook. One of them is FootConsultant.com, and there is a procedure that they will shorten your second toe. See, I'm old school. <laughs> I prefer my second toe as it is the way God intended. Be it longer or shorter or about the same as my big toe. <laughs> Spirit of Steve, be with me. Oh, may the mustache prevail. Oh, boy. Oh, it's, a it's, a, duster. it's a cookie dust. Oh so God. this operation... It's performed by making a small cut over the top of the toe. Oh, hell no! (laughs) If a corn or damaged skin is present, this can normally be removed at the same time. A small section of bone is then removed using a specialized bone-removing instrument. Um, Just the right amount of bone is removed to make the toe the correct length. Correct. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, The bones are then remodeled into the correct shape. With the toe, sh- with the toes or toes shortened, the bones then need to be held in place. There are two ways to do this: with either a wire or an implant. And I don't care about reading anymore. My grandmother actually had that surgery performed on one of her toes just because she had a. Uh, she it, it causes your. To- <gasps> there are some people whose toes are actually start to cross over, like when you cross your fingers to the other realm. Toes, like the oh. yeah, and <laughs> she actually had to have steel rods and stuff put into her toes and and that stuff done to it, so it would try to correct itself. It was pretty gnarly because there was such a severe condition that it rebent the steel rods and put it back over like this permanently. I don't like feet. You don't like. I don't much care for feet. I don't want to host this show no more. <laughs> so the next tab is I looked up what is a creepy pasta because right. I, I've heard the word a bunch of times. Mm-hmm. I didn't know the origin or what exactly that meant. I mean, I do know what a creepy pasta is. I'm just like, what? Why this stupid, idiotic <laughs> phrase? Um, it, for those of you that don't know, a creepy pasta is internet horror story. Um, the name derives from copy paste, copy pasta, which also sounds really stupid, which is an internet slang term for a block of text that gets copied and pasted over and over again from website to website. When you said pasta, did you mean pasta? No, it says pasta. P a y s t a. Well, it says P a s t a. Copy pasta. From Are you trying to decide paste? whether or not he should smack his mouth? I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I, I didn't think that's like a, this. No, I think that's a that's that's okay. I'm just, just asking. I mean, I just asking. I'll, I'll let you read the tab, but I mean, no, 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 no I don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. I was you just can't look at the asking. source. No, just ask. Oh. We've all seen Raiders. You can't look <laughs> at the source. No. <laughs> okay, so now this one. I kind of got from a YouTube video um, of some people reacting to a segment from Dr. Phil. It is jillyjuice.com. Yeah, this this lady. Am I? What? Am I going to have to beat this whole thing? No, no. (laughs) 
<laughs> now, see, honey, you don't need to. Yeah. So, please, if you're out there, do not purchase anything from Jilly Juice because there was a doctor on there that said this is horrific for you. What, Jilly Juice? Jilly, J-I-L-L-Y. I probably shouldn't have spelled that because now somebody's going to look it up. But basically, this woman fermented cabbage with a whole lot of salt. This liquid is 60% salt. And she said if you can manage to drink a gallon a day, that basically it's the cure for what ails you. She said you could live up to 400 years. Now, see, I'm old school. <laughs> yeah. And the kind of funny thing is, I don't know if this guy was a plant or not during the segment. That sounds this dude awful. rushed the stage. Like, I want to try it. And Dr. Phil's like, whoa, 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 whoa. You ain't going to try it. Get back to your seat. And I'm like, uh, that's a pl- I, I that don't can't know. be. It, I was like, surely to God, that's a plant. But basically, it's a cure for what ails you. It said it would cure everything. And I'm, I'm just going to tell you what it says. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not stating any kind of beliefs or affiliations here. <laughs> but one of the things she said, she said it could cure high blood pressure, which it has a lot of sodium in there. Um, mm-hmm. Diabetes. It can make you live forever. It can cure homosexuality. It can cure AIDS. Oh. And yeah, I mean, so it got really just weird and inappropriate with this woman. And yeah, I mean, like I said, I you know, if if you are a member of the LGBTQ plus community, we love you too. That, that's not our beliefs. <laughs> no, I'm just stating what this not. crazy lady that, said. Now, this would be a random timestamp for somebody to just randomly start listening and then just hear that one spot and then just get really hatefully mad at us for something off. we didn't really actually say. Out of context, hatred. No. <laughs> yes. Please listen to the whole segment. Yeah. <laughs> and if you hear Steve Harvey's voice, it wasn't actually him. It was me, Shazam. It's it me. You. Yeah. Okay, and I'm going to move past this tab before anything else gets happening. The the other one I found on Facebook, okay? Oh, no. And I feel like we could apply this to make money. I posted it to Austin the other day, and he rejected me. I'm not going to get potbelly pigs at this house. No, no, it wasn't potbelly pigs, like even though potbelly pigs are awesome, They're and like I puppies. want one, and I would probably name him Toby. That'd be a cute pot belly pig name. Yep. But I'm not having them at my house. I don't yep. care. Well, we need to accumulate roughly 15K. Oh, no. Now I, I think I think that's how much capital we'll need to start up. This company is called Denver Doll LTD. Uh. And for <laughs> averaging $200, you can rent a posable slotted friend. Read between lines. You can figure out what that means. You rent it? A yes. real doll. Yeah. Wait, I'm a s- for the pigs? No, no. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, oh my God, that's it, guys. If, if you real dogs for pigs. For <laughs> porking. <laughs> it's for porking. Uh, uh, Marcus? Uh, I mean, if you want to call the quote unquote John's pigs, then yes. Uh, because well, I don't want to call John a pig. <laughs> I don't know who he is. We like John. Well, I mean, if you put your pork loin in it, you know. Oh. But they had. They said they have a strict sanitization process. I don't care how <laughs> strict oh, your exactly. sanitization I do process not is. Either. Yeah. The basically what they do is they just take it. They jump on its stomach. <laughs> <laughs> it just goes. <laughs> it's just, and then they w- use a Lysol wipe, and they're like, "We strenuously disinfect and make sure." <laughs> then how do you explain the boot marks, Terry? <laughs> <laughs> just, just wipe them off, I don't Terry. Want to how do you explain the boot marks, Terry? <laughs> well, that goes to show you, Janet, I was wearing Crocs that night. <laughs> why are they named my family? Why did you? Why are these people my family members? Because you're from the east of Tennessee. That's all everybody's named up there. <laughs> How Crocs saved a marriage. <laughs> so... so <laughs> Under sanitation, <laughs> it says we cleanse them inside out, inside and out, with hospital grade antimicrobial soap. Uh, next, next they're wanded with a UV sanitizer light that kills ninety nine point nine percent of viruses and germs. Which I'm like, how do you know that you're effectively using this UV wand? Plus, this Sorry. is bored people. You know, they um, get bored at work, and you just like, then, okay, we can move. And then, how wait? How much was it? And for how long does that rental fee last? Two hours. You you get the the, the place, 
and it's around two hundred dollars. It varies from doll to doll because there's there's a catalog where you can pick which one. Okay, People. basically all they need is just a in store business and a room that's like a fitting room, and then a giant Hobart, and then on the other side of the Hobart you can have another fitting room. <laughs> Okay, well, hold on. I'm still reading their sanitization process. Oh, God, help me. <laughs> then the doll undergoes a blacklight process to confirm that the doll is clean and ready for use, and then it's powdered and stored. Still, it's it can it will never, ever be clean enough. That's disgusting. They'll never wash away the shame. <laughs> you will, <laughs> they will never be able to take away the yeah. stains on that doll's soul. Well, well actually, a- I know what could wash away the stain. Gross. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, <laughs> That's the song. That's the song. I mean, How much does it cost to put me through this sterilization process? <laughs> After using said doll. <laughs> no, just uh, me in general. <laughs> Question. <laughs> Are you wanting to be cleaned inside and out thoroughly? Tiny, I never have been before. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. If you want to get the UV wand, yes. we'll make it happen for the cost of materials. Oh, speaking of that, I think that it would be an excellent idea for us four to all go get colonics together. I you would know, do it, but only if we record it for the podcast. No, like we could all just like be in, we could be, you know, just recording it together as we all just get our colons cleansed together. Now, have you seen videos of people getting colonics? No. No. I have. <laughs> They're on YouTube. Wait, what? You watch doo doo vacuum videos? Well, it, it's not quite that. Okay. Well, what um, else does it, what else is it about? Well, I mean, look, it's not vacuumed out, it comes out on its own. But one particular one was a mother and daughter doing like a couple's colonic. And they put you on a chair similar to one that is at a chiropractor's office or a, de- or a dentist's office. Or your basement. Yeah. Except, except there is a tube with a nozzle. And when you climb up there, you insert it into your rectum dang near killed them and then they (laughs) pump the things (laughs) (laughs) and then they pump the what i'm going to refer as colonic juice (laughs) up through your dirt button to get in there and loosen up what i'm going to refer to as Quick Crete, I guess. Oh, hell no! And then once it gets in there, you know, and works its magic, which they want you to kind of, kind of hold it in for you know a couple of minutes, and then it just all comes out of you down the pipe. So your fart smelling gross is a result of caked poo inside of your GI tract, and. Just so you know, today, mine smelled like, you know, you left the e-brake on for too long, and then you get that Bernie smell. That's what mine smelled like today, so I don't know what caused that. <laughs> I have to pull the e-brake on this episode now. <laughs> Skirt! Skirt! Not a moment too soon. <laughs> Thank you for listening to us. I hope you kept listening to us. <laughs> And you're probably on Spotify or iTunes or Pandora, oddly enough, actually. That's that's one that a lot of people have been listening to us on. Really? Um, keep listening to us on those if you want, or all three. If you've got all three, do it. Do them all. But specifically with iTunes, there are these five stars. And like with the Mario crime family, their goal is to collect the stars. And that allows them to continue the, with their mission of, I, I guess, dominance of the crime world. So if you could help us dominate the crime world and click all five of the stars, uh, then there are no more stars. And then we will be the kingpins of the crime world. Or the big meatball. Or, or the big meatball. Or if you uh, develop any kind of spaghetti sauce recipes that doesn't have any sugar added into it, uh, make sure you contact us on Facebook at Nerd Grapevine. For uh, Twitter, it's going to be at Nerd Grapevine. For Instagram, it's at Nerd Grapevine. Have you gotten a theme yet? Have you gotten the pattern? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, and that's it. And then you go to the Patreon account, and that's going to be Best Friends period, Tiny Ink period. And <laughs> Only yeah. one in, though, not yeah, four. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got the brain zoom again. Uh, so you, yeah, that's it. That's that's what you do. So getting on there and Patreon would be great if you donated a little bit to us. We've got some stickers available. We're going to be developing more merchandise uh, along the road. Um, just you know, sticking in here. You know, we're going to have to go. Have to get insane. So we've reached the point in the show to where I ask the question. Discord. About, oh, there's a Discord. <laughs> oh, hi, tiny. There, there's always a Discord and. You're causing Discord. And Datcord. But we also have a Discord server. Mm -hmm. So you can get on there. You can talk to the grapes live, uncut, and uncensored. Um, there's there's an obli uh, man. Smack Obli it, bud. Obligatory meme channel. An obligatory channel. meme channel. There is a spot for things that we've spoken into being. Mm. Um, and I haven't told y'all, but... This week, I made us all, you know, sticker decals to go on the back of our car of our podcast. I have an extra one. I'm willing to do a giveaway on the Discord. <gasps> so join the Discord and give us, I don't free know. Free advertising. Well, free advertising <laughs> if you win it. But just, I, okay, the best meme, you'll get it. And you can put it on your car and it'll be great. The meme? No, no, no. The the Nerd Through the Great Vine podcast window decal. I like that. So it's the next decal. episode, we'll announce the winner. We'll give it a week. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's fun. That I like sounds that. exciting. Yeah. I just pulled that out of my butt. Incentive, baby. Oh, is that how it sticks to the window so well? Yeah. Hey, Maybe Tiny. I get some Dr. Natura. Tiny, tiny, tiny. When life gives you grapes, make sure that they didn't come from aliens and yeah. And poop a squid. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Eat a great poop a squid. Eat a great poop a squid. And it, and as long as it's not from aliens. I think Dr. Phil's the real plant. <laughs> <laughs>